Kitchen by Rules. And tonight, because we're going for super easy and pretty fast, we're gonna have a bourbon neat, of course, in my grandma Cora's glass because it makes me feel fancy. And whenever I have neat bourbon, I go for Basil Hayden's, which is very fine. It's not one of the rock gut ones like we used to have at the restaurant. If you didn't know, when you order a bar drink from the restaurant, you get some brands that are kind of hilarious and it is not this kind of stuff. And so while I'm having my bourbon, I've got some vegetable oil heating over here in the stock pot. And what we're gonna make is the easiest beef vegetable stew you could have. I forgot to let y'all see, I'm cutting up an onion here, so friends that like to know what's going on. And remember, I told y'all the secret before in one of my previous episodes about not crying with your onions like I'm currently crying for missing baseball. I don't know about y'all, but I'm gonna be so sad forever if I don't get baseball back. Some of these rules are stupid. I don't know why we are acting so crazy, but whatever. I miss fantasy baseball, I miss real baseball. I miss the old Bush Stadium, but I couldn't have that back anyway. But where I'm gonna lose my mind is if they force the DH into the NL. I think pitchers ought to know how to hit like in the old days. And I know there's some talk about how they only hit very bad numbers, but I reckon they can hit when they're in middle school and high school before they know they're going to be the starting pitcher and have to have a protected arm and such. I don't think they have to be as bad as people play out to be. And in fact, why is it that pitchers don't pitch a whole game anymore? I just think it's ridiculous how we have to count pitches and be so coddled all the time. I mean, people were tougher back once upon a time. And don't y'all, don't y'all at me with your little stories about, oh, their precious muscles and what they're worth, blah, 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 toughen up people, toughen up. And so we're cutting our onion. And by the way, if I, if you wish I would tell you what was said in my earlier episode, you cut an onion away from the leaves and then you don't get all the scentiness of what makes y'all cry, doesn't release the gases and oils. You can look at the onion once you cut off the tops and you can see the direction things grow in. I guess if I had a studio light, y'all could see. But anyway, we're cutting up an onion while our oil's heating over here. And then we're gonna toss that in and let it start to turn translucent, which is when you know your onions are good and ready to add other things to them. We might toss a wee tiny bit of salt in there too, just because we can. And if you know anything, you know we're gonna use Morton's kosher salt because that's the one I like. And the reason I keep mentioning all these name brands is friends, I'm kind of hoping that one of these good days, they will see fit to say, Lee Brown, we love you, and we want to give you money and free stuff. But that hasn't happened yet, so I'm just hopeful right now. So our oil's hot. Let's toss some. Y'all hear that? I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the young people call that an ASMR. Isn't that an ASMR, Timmy, that sound? It probably is, but now he won't answer me because, yes, I'm his mother. Okay, so let's start going down in the pot a little bit. Oh, that sounds and smells so good. All right. Let me get a little bit of kosher salt to put in there. All right, the next thing we're going to add, as soon as our onions are mostly translucent, I'm putting in about this much. So for those of y'all that are measurers, that's probably ish, a quarter of a teaspoon. And I'm back to ishing. If you watched my bacon episode, remember bacon is chemistry and science and the other cooking is cooking. And we go by feels and what feels good, smells good, tastes good, and smells good. It's all your senses, frankly, except for the, well, I guess you can touch your food too, go over the texture. Some people are weird about food textures. All right, so we've added in a little bit of minced garlic. I put in about three shakes. So I don't know how much three shakes is. And now we've got that going. Bless you. All right, so the next thing we're gonna add is a pound of stew meat. And if your grocery store's like mine, it will say it's for marinating and for pot roast and for stews, which means it ain't your fancy cut. This ain't no filet mignon. This is meat that is meant to be cooked down. So you wouldn't eat this rare, friends. But I do eat a filet black and blue rare. I don't have any respect for people that eat their filets well done. I'll be honest with you, when we worked at a restaurant, Y'all don't want to know what we do to you people that were a well-done steak. Unless it's like, you know, hamburger steak, it should be well-done. All right, so let's get that going good. We're going to stir this up until our stew meat is nice and brown. Pull my camera a little closer, friends. 
and get it brown. We're on the medium high right now. We're just gonna cook that. Now while that's going, let me tell you what's going in next. This is why it's the easiest recipe ever. We're gonna put in three containers of vegetable broth. I'm using Simple Truth Organic, which I think is the Harris Teeter brand or the Kroger brand or whatever, because Kroger bought Harris Teeter, and I was afraid they were gonna ruin it, but they haven't yet, so good job, Kroger, not ruining the grocery store. And I didn't go to Lowe's Foods this week because they had the specials at the Harris Teeter. So, we're gonna put in three containers of the vegetable broth, and then, a frozen vegetable mix. Now you're like, well, Lee Brown, I can't get in your Ziploc bag. I know, friends, I know. And so what's in here is frozen lima beans and frozen green beans and frozen corn and frozen mix and frozen okra. I think that's all we have. Green beans, corn, lima beans, okra, and a little bit of the carroty kind of all-purpose mix. If you buy one bag of each and divide them all in two, then when you make this one evening, you can have the other bag to make the other evening. So I'm making this is the round two from that collection of vegetables. So this is another one of those evenings where you can make supper for not a great outpouring of money, friends. Okay. We are just about brown. Now don't cook it until it's dead. I mean, the, the cow's already gone. We've set our peas. You want to make sure it's browned all the way around, but if you cook it until it's brown all the way through, you are going to have shoe leather, and shoe leather is nobody's favorite thing to eat for supper. But your family might eat it and act like they like it because they love you, but you know better, friends. All right. Oh, we are so close. We are so close. So in the immortal words of Bill Gallagher, I'm going to have a sip of something. Mmm. Oh, I hope y'all had a better day. You know, we don't know what day we're going to have here these days. But I will say this as a real tour. Every time I have the chance to show property or list a house, I am grateful, grateful, grateful. Got a good week this week. Going to be a good week next week. All right. So now we're going to put in our vegetable broth. And they're going to do all your satisfying sounds are gone now, friends. I know, right? Don't you hate it when the sizzling ends? But you want to have more than a sizzle. In that life, you need more than a sizzle. You need some substance, which is frankly why I'm so stinking glad to be a real dragon to work with some really great people who are sizzle and substance. There's some that are all sizzle, no substance, but I have to believe they could be saved. And the ones that are substance with no sizzle, well, there's a, a butt for every saddle, so there's somebody for them too. But I will say I have enjoyed this 20 years in real estate. I have, I have. And this is actually one of those suppers that can be made if you happen to be in the real estate business or in any business where you work long hours. Because you might not know this, but realtors work 12, 14 hour days when we're able to be busy. Which is why so many of your realtor friends have lost their ever loving mind during the quarantine because they're used to working. But anyway, when I'm working late, this is an easy one to come home and get thrown together. Or if I'm traveling, I can leave the ingredients because this is one that my kids can put together. Now we're also adding in a 32 ounce can of diced tomatoes. I'm using Fermano's because it was on sale and had no sugar in it. Now y'all have noticed already that I do enjoy sugar, but I like it where it belongs. I don't want it snuck into my food because that's just not cool. So let's stir that and make sure we don't have anything sticking to the bottom. You always gotta check for things sticking to your pan. And let's see, turn the heat up a little bit because we want to get this to a boil. So I am right below high. I don't want super high because I don't need to go crazy. Now we're still dumping this whole bag of vegetables, y'all. You're thinking, good Lord, woman. I know, right? It's a lot of vegetables. Again, one bag of limas, one bag of cut corn, one bag of okra, one bag of green beans, and then one bag of the mix. Cut it half in two and then fill up two Ziploc bags and you've got two giant suppers, y'all. It's very good. Now, got all the vegetables in there going. Let's add some seasoning. We need some pepper. So let's put in enough to make it float on the top and we can see it. We can always go back and add it. And then some thyme. We're gonna use some McCormick's again because that's usually what I have available. And you can put some thyme in and We'll put in about, I don't know if that's a teaspoon or about. <coughs> mm. 
I usually put in enough to where I can smell it good. And then I think we need a little more salt. So let's put another, about a half a teaspoon of salt in there. <coughs> Stir that in. Now we want to get this to a boil. Once it's boiling, we're going to cut the heat down to a simmer. And it's going to simmer for 15 minutes. So when y'all see me again, my vegetables and beef and broth will have simmered for 15 minutes. I'll show you the last step and you'll see how quickly you can have supper together all while you're enjoying a nice neat glass of bourbon. And I'm back. Was that like the fastest 15 minutes you've ever experienced, right? So you've let it now simmer for 15 minutes, 20 if your stove is slow until the vegetables are tender. And you know how you can check that, right? Take your spoon and scooch it up next to the pot and see if it breaks and then it's tender. And now we're gonna dump in a box of Barilla or Barilla, I don't know how you say it, Dittolini. And Dittolini is tricky, people. You need to know this. It looks tiny in this box. It's gonna blow up and fill this pot up. And so dump it in and you're gonna think, there's not enough in here. Look, it's gonna about be coming out of the pot when it's done. I know that sounds crazy. And so now you're gonna cook this for eight to 10 minutes until your pasta is the thickness and the al dente-ness that you like. And then you're done. You can put some whatever on top. I don't know, put some cheese on it if you want to, some extra salt, pepper, get you a piece of bread. We're gonna have hours of tater tots because we're fancy like that. But I hope you've enjoyed this supper that's ready in 40 minutes-ish tops, unless you're really slow prepping, in which case I can't help you. And subscribe for more and I'll see you next time. Let me know if you made it and if it came out good.